For me personally, one of the greatest things about wine is trying new wine that I've never tried before. And in one of my recent videos called Trader Joe's Alcohol, I told you that I scored a bottle of Pet Net and I was so excited about it because I've never tried a Pet Net before. So in this video, we are going to be talking about Pet Nets, Pet Land Naturel, uh, and trying one on camera. So please stay tuned. Welcome back to my wine diary, everyone. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for being here for yet another video. And if you're new to my channel at the end of it, if you liked it, of course, please consider subscribing. So you guys, before we get into nitty gritty details about pet nets, we should discuss the method in which it's produced. And Petelan Naturel is made in uh, Méthode Ancestrale is how we call it, which is an ancient method that's predating Méthode Champenoise in which champagne is made. And what this Asian method does it's basically allowing the initial fermentation after bottling the wine uh, to be finished inside of the bottle. So once the bottle uh, is filled, it's being corked, or in Pat Nat's case, it's actually crown capped for the most part. And then that's it. That initial fermentation is all it gets, that natural carbonation that gets developed, no other intervention. That's why Petilan Naturel uh, on its own means naturally sparkling. That's it. And that is exactly why pet nets are so peculiar to me, because normally we definitely see uh, at least two rounds of fermentation, like in champagnes and proseccos. You know, it's it's very different here with pet nets. That natural carbonation is all you get. Uh, and right on the bottle itself, it says semi-sparkling wine, which to me is just new. I've never heard of anything like that. So I think that this is very unique and it's very indeed natural. So I expect for pet nets without trying them yet, I will be trying it for the first time on camera to be very refreshing, slightly fizzed and um, just crisp and, and refreshing. Petilan Naturel can be made with different, very many different grape varieties, both red and white. So some of the most known or most common uh, grapes that are used for Petilan Naturels are um, Gamay, Chenin Blanc, you have Sauvignon Blanc, and Pinot Noir as well. But sometimes winemakers go crazy and they use pretty much any other uh, grape varietal to try and make a pet net, but those are the most common ones. Another peculiar thing about pet nets is that for the most part, they are unfiltered or unfined, as we say in the wine world. So because that uh, bottle is crown capped or corked, at the initial fermentation, while that initial fermentation is still going, uh, there's no time to really filter that wine. And quite frankly, even if there was time to do that, winemakers choose not to because that unfiltered look and a bit of a hazy look to a pet net um, is actually quite charmful. So most winemakers decide um, not to filter or not fine it as we say. As I'm looking at the bottle that I'm going to be opening in front of you here in a second, I'm actually failing to find the vintage of this one, but that brings me to my next point, and that is the fact that pet nets are meant to be consumed probably after a year or two after they were bottled. So uh, this specific wine type is meant to be consumed fresh, um, and they just don't have those aging capabilities like some of the traditional method sparkling wines do, such as champagne, for instance. So definitely go uh, for your pet nuts. Do not store them, do not age them. They're definitely much better tasting when they're consumed young. Another piece of information that I failed to find on the bottle or online for that matter is actually what grape was used for my specific pet net that I have here. So it is a product of France. However, it does not specify uh, which grape varietal was used to produce it. It was definitely a red grape just because it is a rosé, um, but I wish I knew whether this was Pinot Noir grape or, or any other one for that matter. Could be a Gamay, but I think just based on the area which it comes from, it should be a Pinot Noir. So the flavor profile of Pat Nats can be truly unpredictable because of that natural fermentation. And alongside with the fruitiness and the crisp acidity, the very lively acidity that Pat Nats have, you can sometimes taste some eastiness to them as well. Again, just because of that um, natural carbonation and uh, the initial fermentation process. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I've realized I actually did not have a proper um, bottle opener, um, you know, the crown cap opener, except for this one that I already have on my corkscrew here at home. So that was, that was kind of strange, but let's go ahead and open it up. I really hope I didn't shake it too much. Um, 
This one specifically um, is on the thumbnail of this video. So it's by Listel, I believe the company is pronounced. Petna, this is how it looks like, and this is our um, crown cap, just like a beer or a cider. And my camera does not want to focus on it. Uh, we also have the piece of paper that goes um, right above it that just says Petillard Naturel Rosé. So let's go ahead and open it up. We're going to pour it into this tulip glass that I grabbed, just a little, little sparkling wine tulip flute. Nice pop to it. Okay. Let's check it out. The color is very pretty. Quite frankly, just by pouring it, it doesn't seem any less um, carbonated than a regular sparkling wine is, but this is the color. As you can see, it's this beautiful peachy rose color. And let's go ahead and try it out. So just by smelling it, it actually smells sweet, if that makes sense. So the fruit aromas that come through on the nose for me are on the sweeter side. So I'm, I'm smelling uh, peaches. I'm smelling maybe like a raisin smell to this one. Uh, definitely some raspberry smell as well. But it's very stone fruit forward, so apricots, peaches, um, something like that comes through on the nose for me. So I'm not going to swirl it just because it is sparkling wine. So let's go ahead and go at it. Oh, this is so lovely. Mm, it is very refreshing. It's actually off sweet in my opinion. It's a little bit sweeter than I expected for it to be. It's very refreshing. Yeah, that fizz is so gentle. It's it's definitely not as carbonated as sparkling wines are normally. Um, so 100% feeling those stone fruits on the palate as well. And I said peach before, it really is an off sweet wine to me. It's on the sweeter side for sure. So I would even say candied peach comes through on the palate here for me as well. And then both on the nose and um, on, on the taste as well. I think of some red berries, like smaller red berries, like red currant, uh, maybe some raspberries too. It's very refreshing. I would 100% recommend to serve it very chilled. So just like you normally would serve a Prosecco, a Cava, a Champagne, maybe even keep it in an ice bucket. And then I absolutely would not mind adding a small cube, not a large cube, but a small cube of ice here as well. This wine is already light. And for me, that little ice cube would actually break the off sweetness um, a little bit. So I think for me personally, it would be even more pleasant to have it with a tiny cube of ice, but to each their own. So yeah, I am um, pleasantly surprised. I can't say that I really like the sweetness of it because I prefer drier wines, uh, including sparkling wines on the drier side, but uh, this is still a very good find for me and a very good first. As far as food pairings go, I would recommend for you to think of any food pairings you would normally go uh, for with a rosé, for instance. The acidity is really nice and lively here, and I would say any seafood dishes, your salads, charcuterie boards, so it's kind of versatile in that sense when it comes to food pairings, uh, maybe oysters, shellfish, anything of that sort. Think about a summer day, anything you'd put on the table on a hot summer day would go really well with a chilled pet net, in my opinion. I think of pet nets as a very artistic and growing in popularity wine. Um, another thing that I really like about them is um, that wineries that do pet nets are normally are all about saving the environment too. So they try to use minimal intervention, uh, no pesticides, um, you know, and just try to grow them 
with uh, as little as possible and for that reason they come off tasting really natural really crisp and refreshing too and speaking of pet nuts being a little artistic you know when it comes to bottle labels you will see pet nuts uh, with sometimes hand-drawn pictures on them very unique looking labels that are eye-catchy uh, and I think it, it perfectly describes what this wine really is it's whimsical it's very non-standard it's a little bit different it stands out uh, even by its name to be honest with you so I'm very glad that it's growing in popularity nowadays and more and more people want to try it more and more uh, stores want to carry it and I really hope to see it in more restaurants and bars too because so far to be honest with you I have not guys this is it for today's video I am grinning ear to ear because I was so excited to try this pet nut and quite honestly I liked it I preferred for it to be a little less sweet and for that reason I'm going to explore pet nuts further I'll see if I can order some online perhaps that are non rosé uh, and remember that too my description of this particular uh, pet net was just based on this specific one that I bought and it's a rosé pet net. So depending on what grape varietal um, it was uh, made of and then also what my winemaker it was that made it, characteristics will be different too. So I will be on my pursuit of finding a pet net that's a little bit crisper and drier personally and I'll keep you posted with that. Perhaps post another video once I score another bottle of pet net. Uh, but I truly recommend for you to try it out if you are a wine enthusiast like I am and you still have not tried a pet net, um, please do if you find it somewhere and then come back to this video and leave me a comment down below or DM me on social media on my Instagram and share what you thought of a pet net trying it for the first time. This is it for today's video. My social media handles will be down below. Please subscribe to this channel if you like this video and want to check out the other ones and until next time, cheers everyone!